What we're going to be looking at in this session is the reports that most people would need to make sure that their business is running well. The reports we're going to look at from a financial point of view are the profit and loss account, the balance sheet, our debtors and our creditors. What we will look at first is the profit and loss account. In order to get there, I can click on reports at the bottom of the screen or I can click on reports at the top of the screen. I'll click on reports at the bottom and it comes up with a list of the various reports that we can look at, grouped by their types of reports. A profit and loss account and a balance sheet are basically about our accounts. Our debtors are included in the sales area and the creditors, our trade creditors, the people we owe money for our suppliers to, will be included in the purchases area. Because I'm looking at a profit and loss account first, I'll actually drag the uh, screen down until I get to a profit and loss accrual. There are actually two profit and loss accounts we can look at. There is the profit and loss accrual and there is the profit and loss cash. The profit and loss cash will be used by small businesses. It only reflects the cash transactions. So if I raise an invoice for a sale for $10,000, it will not be included in the profit and loss cash until such time as the money is paid to me. Small businesses have a slight tax advantage in that respect. People like BHP get taxed as soon as they raise the invoice, regardless of when it gets paid. However, most businesses will look basically at the profit and loss accrual account. If I click on profit and loss accrual, and then click customize, it will ask me to look at the advanced filters. When do I want the period to show me? Do I want just the current month from the 1st until today's date, which is the 13th, or do I want my year to date? For most people, a year to date is more meaningful. So I'll click July. 1st of July 2012 to the 31st of March 2013. In the Finishing tab, if I click on that, it then tells me whether I want to include zero balances. My normal answer to that is no. If there's nothing there, do I need to know about it? Do I want separate pages? I never click that. Do I want to round to a whole dollar? To be perfectly honest, I normally do. And do I want to include account numbers? Depending on what I'm going to do with this report, it might be easier to have the account numbers with me. But as a basic profit and loss account, I don't really need to worry about account numbers. Do I want to include the company name? Yes, the address, yes, and the date and time. In a session with my profit and loss accounts, I look at it, make some necessary revisions, do some certain adjustments. I've got my fourth or fifth one that I've printed out. The wind blows, the papers get blown all over the room and I've got to put them back together. With the date and time, I can make sure I'm looking at my last one. It's happened to me on several occasions. So what I will now do is to click display. My profit and loss statement, which is for one period only, is for income. It shows my net sales, my two sources of sales income, services and repairs and sales from the store. My total sales came to 13,000. Did I do all right? We'll have a look a bit further down. And it is showing me there that I've got $1,700 in direct job costs for materials and I've got some stock discrepancies of $636.37. Obviously, when I did a stock take and had to write it off, or when I took it off the shelf, I forgot to record it against jobs. So my material costs so far are 2,300, leaving me with a net profit of 11,421. That looks pretty healthy. I actually have a gross profit margin of 11 divided by 13, about 70 odd percent. I can live with that. If I look further down, comes my overheads, my expenses, my general and administrative expenses, my accounting fees, $500, 
and my telephone bills fifty three dollars and sixty four cents. I spent five hundred and fifty dollars. My employment, who have I had to pay? I've had to pay one assistant. His superannuation, a quick look at that tells me yeah, that's about nine percent. And total cost of twelve thousand five hundred. Business would have been a bit slow to start with, and hopefully it's going to start picking up. My rent, my property insurance, and my water. My total expenses come to $14,220. If I continue down, it says my operating profit. In other words, what I sold less what it cost me to make the goods and services that I produced. Less my overheads comes to a net loss of $2,799. The minus sign there is an important thing to look at. I know it says operating profit over here, but the actual figure's got a minus in front of it. If I scroll further down, there is no other income. I've got a rounding expense, okay. <laughs> so my net loss for the period, I have a net loss figure here, $2,799.20 for the period July 2012 to March 2013. Profit and loss account is a very important thing for me to look at. If I'm not making a profit, or I'm not making a profit and I thought I should be making a profit, I need to do some investigation. Most businesses when they start up will have laid out a budget plan how am I progressing in terms of that budget? Are my sales in accordance with what my budget would be? Are my expenses in accordance with what my forecast expenses would be? Is my cost of sales in accordance with what I forecast my cost of sales to be? I need to look at all these, work out where the problems are, and either I know that I'm not getting as many customers as I should, I either have to put up my prices or work harder to get more customers. My profit and loss is a key to how well I am travelling and a very important statement. When I finish looking at it, I can print it off if I need to keep a copy of it or maybe I want to send it to somebody, maybe my financial advisor. If I click send to, it gives me the option of putting it into Excel where I can work on the figures or emailing it to somebody like my accountant or faxing it. I can create a PDF so that they can't change it, etc, etc, etc. If I close, it will take me back to the reports list. And if I close there, it will take me back to the main control account scheme.